Okay. I held this jug upside down for five to ten minutes, and it started to get the translucency that I wanted. And I was starting to be able to see sort of a ridge where the first test of the paint, where it was a little thicker, um, you could kind of see a ridge. I think that's what was causing it um, in the translucency where the paint was a little thicker and was clinging a little better, and then the rest was dripping more. So I went and turned it right side up now to let it kind of settle and start drawing. And I think that it is probably going to start dripping down enough and settling mostly in the bottom that I'm going to have to start doing something to help it um, dry more quickly. And in the meantime, I scooped up the paint that had dripped on the newspaper while I was holding the jug upside down, used my tooth, my paintbrush, not my toothbrush, my paintbrush to scoop it back up into the container. I should mark that as being mixed with alcohol so that I don't make a mistake of thinking it's the same as the other paints. Um, and then I, you know, wiped up some of my mess. This jug is also going to need to be cleaned. I wiped some of it. You might be able to see. There's some paint like on the outside here and like smeared on this um, handle, things like that that I need to clean up. Oh, and here you can see that maybe there was an air bubble that decided right then to pop so that you can actually see um, a, a hole in the paint there. So I'm going to try to get the paint to drip a little differently to help cover that back up. I'll get back to you in a sec. Okay, I'm trying to get that one air bubble to fill in, but it's not working very well. And you can also see, there we go. It's a little hard to see with the lens, but you can see there's a couple of air bubbles right there. Um, those are a little harder to pop when they're on the inside. I can't necessarily reach them with any of my tools to pop them. So I'm just trying to um, glide the paint around to deal with these issues because you can end up with, like I have here, basically a, a little empty spot. I may be able to touch some of that up later after the paint dries by putting in a curved tool, like a, a wire with a sponge on the end and just dabbing some paint on the inside in those areas uh, using the paint that I had saved. Oh, those bubbles are sliding down farther now. But this one is just not filling in. Get back to you again. Okay. I have washed my paintbrush out and washed my hands, cleaned up my area, and now I'm just taking a damp paper towel and scrubbing the paint off the outside of the jug. So you just, I just personally dampened one side of the jug, uh, paper towel to wipe and then I've got another area I can dry with if I need to. So I'm just going around and doing that. Okay, I finished wiping off the outside of the jug with the damp paper towel and the bubble hole is still there so I'm going to try to fiddle with it. You can also kind of see, um, see I'm focus. Oh, it's sort of a this thing that looks sort of grainy, a little speckly because it's getting the paint's getting very thin there and it's getting thicker down at the bottom now. So I'm either have to constantly roll it as it dries, which probably wouldn't work because then what would happen is the drier parts of the paint might get peeled away or there might be dry parts that stick and the wetter parts peel away from that and roll away. And I would probably end up with paint in clumps. So I think I'm going to have to um, take a blow dryer or something to heat it. I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to play around, but I'm pretty sure that you don't want to hear a blow dryer on the video. 
and there's not going to be much to see. So when I get done getting this thing to dry, which might take days, then um, we'll go to part three of making this lamp base. See you then.